Jaya Radha. Oh, ten offenses. Ah, yes. Ten offenses in chanting a holy name. Yeah, it's also, also there in this book, no? Yeah. In the song book. In the song book. Yeah, it's there, right? Usually, sometimes I've seen ten offenses. Okay. You have to take offenses. Ten offenses to be avoided in chanting the holy name. Ten offenses to be avoided in chanting the holy name. Number one. Number one. Read. Jarada Hari. Jarada. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Balabha Girid Bharatari Jana Bala Ba Girid Bharatari Gopi Jana Bala Ba Girid Bharatari Yashoda Nandana Prachachana Ranchanha Yashoda Nandana Prachachana Ranchanha Yashoda Nandana Prachachana Ranchana Yashoda Nandana Prachachana Ranchana Yamuna Thira Vanachari Yamuna Thira Vanachari Yamuna Thira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Balabha Girid Bharatari Gopi Jana Gopi Jana Bala Ba Giri Bharatari Gopi Jana Bala Ba Giri Bharatari Yashodhanandana Prachachan Rajana Yashoda Nandana Prachachana Rajana Yamuna Thira Vanachari Yamuna Thira Vanachari Yamuna Thira Vanachari
हरे राम हरे राम हरे राम हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवा 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 नारायण नमस्कृत नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चैवान सरस्वती व्यास कथोजयुदीरायु भद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवाया नित्यम भागवत सेवाया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्ति भवती नष्टी भक्ति श्रीमद् भागवतम दिस कैंटो फोर चैप्टर थर्टी वन टेक्स नंबर ट्वेंटी सिक्स श्री शुक अवाचा 31 text 26 chapter 3 okay yes guru maharaj shri sukha uvacha मनवश्यानुवर्णिता मानवस्यानुवर्णिता अनुवर्णिता वंशा प्रिया व्रत श्रीशुकवाचा उत नाधो या 
Of King Priyavrata. Of King Priyavrata. Api. Api. Also. Also. Niboda. Niboda. Try to understand. Try to understand. Nipasatama. Nipasatama. O best of kings. O best of kings. Translation. Sukadev Goswami continued. O best of kings. King Parikshit. I have now finished telling about the descendants of the first son of Swayambhuvamanu, Uttanapada. I shall now try to relate the activities of the descendants of Priyavrata, the second son of Swayambhuvamanu. Please hear them attentively. Purport. Dhruva Maharaj was the son of King Uttanapada and as far as the descendants of Dhruva Maharaj or King Uttanapada are concerned, their activities have been described up to the point of the Prachetas. Now Sri Sukadeva Goswami desired to describe the descendants of Maharaj Priyavrata the second son of Swayambhuva Manu. <laughs> Oma Jnana Timarandasya Jnana Shalakaya Chatsur Miritandena Tashmai Shri Guravena Maha Svanchakaupata Rubyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavudyo Namo Namana Jai Shri Krishna Charitana Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vatsabe Gaurvata Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, Sukadeva Goswami had been telling about the first uh, people, first living, the 
first inhabitants of the planet. He was telling about Swayambhuva uh, Manu. Swayambhuva Manu. There are 14 Manus in one day of Brahma. Mm -hmm. One day of Brahma is very long time. Mm -hmm. One day of Brahma means a thousand, well, one to day, one day of Brahma is one thousand ages taken together. One day of Brahma, and Brahma lives a hundred years, and each year has three hundred and sixty days, and a hundred years. So, we're in, we're in the middle of Brahma's life just now in this universe. It's the middle of Brahma's life, but Brahma lives a very long time, and man, there are fourteen manus. In the, day, in the lifetime of Brahma. So, Swayambhuva Manu is the first Manu in this mm -hmm. lifetime of Brahma. This. Mm -hmm. So, Swayambhuva Manu, he had three daughters and two sons. Mm -hmm. The three daughters, they were described. Uh, one of them was Devahuti. Devahuti, of course, was married to Kadama Muni, and they had Lord Kapila as their child. Mm. And then other sisters were there: Devahuti, Prachuti, and Prachut, Prashuti, and Akuti. They were the three daughters of Swayambhuvamanu, and the two sons. What? Well, he's been describing about one son, Uttanapada. And the other son is Priyavrat. Priyavrat is going to be described in the fifth canto. We're nearly finished. There's only one, two more verses to go. And we finish the fourth canto and go on to the fifth canto. And the fifth canto begins about the life of Priyavrata. But the fourth canto described about Uttanapada. Uttanam, Maharaj Uttanapada, he uh, had two wives, Suniti and Saruchi, and from what from uh, Suni, Sun, 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 Suniti she gave birth to Dhruva Maharaj. Mm -hmm. So Dhruva Maharaj was a great devotee. He was a, a great devotee. He was a young boy. When he was a very young boy, he got insulted. At least because he was born in the family of Uttanapada. Uttanapada is a Kshatriya, they're kings. Mm. So the kings are very rajasic, mm. passionate people, you know. Mm. They like to fight and they like to drink and do things like that, you know. So Kshatriyas are like that. So the kings are, are like that. So this, this one king, Uttanapada, he had two wives. And Dhruva Maharaj was born from the Suniti, but, uh, or, well, I can't remember, Suriji, maybe Suriji. <laughs> anyway, she, Dhruva Maharaj wanted to get up on the lap of the father. But the other mother, the stepmother was there, and stepmother was saying to him, said to Dhruva, you cannot sit there. You are not born from my womb. You did not, you're not my child, so you cannot sit on your father's lap. If you want to sit up on your father's knee, you have to be born from my. Mm -hmm. So Dhruva, the little boy, was very upset that his mother spoke like that. So he went to cry to his mother, and the mother said, What can I do? I'm not the favorite wife. You know, when you have two wives, you know, one wife will be more pleasant, more pleasing than the other. There's that problem, you know, when people have more than one wife. <laughs> so, uh, the, the mother said, I can't do anything because your father, he likes this other, his other wife. So then the, the boy said, well then who can help me? Who can help me? I want to get a kingdom bigger than my father. <laughs> and and the, his mother said, well, you should pray to God. You have to go to God. Only God can help you. So he said, where can I find them? So mother said, well, many people, they go to the forest to find them. 
the, the yogis, they live in the forest, so I think they must find them there in the forest. So he said, then I will also go to forest. And so Dhruva Maharaj, although he was only a young boy, he went to the forest. And when he was going into the forest, he met Narada Muni. Narada Muni said to him, he said, oh, you're just a young boy, you know, you should go home. Come back when you're a big man, when you're grown up. He you said, you're too young, you're just a child. And Narada, Adruva Maharaj said to him, are you going to help me or not? <laughs> so Narada Muni saw Dhruva was very determined. So Dhruva Maharaj got instruction. Narada Muni told him, he said, you have to go into the forest and there's a, a lake there called the Bindu Sarova. And you bathe there every day three times a day. Take bath three times a day. The yogis will do that. And take bath three times a day and then you have to practice austerity, do tapasya. And he gave him a mantra to chant. He gave him the mantra, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. He told him, you chant this mantra and you do Astanga Yoga and stand on one leg and control your breath. And you know, he, so Dhruva, he went to the forest, although he was only a young boy, and there was wild animals coming. A lion would come, look him in the face and roar. And Dhruva Maharaj would look at the lion and say, are you God? He's only a little boy. He doesn't know who is God. And when the lion came in front of him, he asked the lion, are you God? He was like that. Dhruva Maharaj was not afraid. And so anyway, he went into the forest and he did what Narada Muni told him. And he began to do austerity. First month, he would only eat whatever was on the tree. And then the second month, he would only eat whatever fell from the tree. Like leaves, he would eat the leaves, the dry leaves. And then the third month, he stopped eating leaves. He would only drink water once every three days. And then the, third, then the fourth month, he wouldn't drink water. He stopped breathing. He was controlling his breathing. And he was, right, he was breathing only once every six days. You know. He was controlling his breath. And he was doing so much austerity that even up in the heavenly planets, the demigods were all burning with heat. It created a heat in the universe. The whole universe became affected by the austerities of Dhruva Maharaj. Mm -hmm. So the demigods were all worried, what are we going to do? What's happening? We're all feeling so much heat. And then Lord Narayan came to them and said, yeah, this is the austerity of Dhruva Maharaj. He said, I will go there. So Lord Narayan came there on the back of Garuda and he went to see Dhruva Maharaj. And Dhruva Maharaj saw the Lord and he offered obeisances to the Lord. They could understand this is the Lord, he's coming on the back of Garuda. And, uh, the Lord asked Dhruva Maharaj what benediction he wants. And Dhruva Maharaj said, now that I've seen you, I don't, I don't want anything. He said, I came here looking to get a kingdom bigger than my father, but I see that is just like pieces of broken glass. But instead of finding a kingdom, I have found you. So he said, I found something more valuable than anything else, more valuable than the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And so the kingdom to me now is just like broken glass, it has no value. Mm -hmm. So Dhruva Maharaj in six months, he, he did tapasya for six months, and after six months he was able to 
see God. Only six months. Yeah, only six months. But he was doing very severe austerity. Mm. He did a lot of tapasya. Mm -hmm. So he went home and his father, his father had been very worried because his son had gone away. He didn't know what had happened to his son. But then Narada Muni came and told them that, no, your son is safe. There's nothing happened to him. He's become a great devotee. And so then Nutanapada gave up the throne and he put Dhruva Maharaj on the throne. And Uttan, the father, went into the forest to do tapasya, to do austerity. That's the Vedic culture that in the older age we should take up spiritual life. Yes. It says actually you should go and live in the forest. Pancha Sorvam Vanam Brajat. From the age of 50, one should go into the forest and take up spiritual life. Material life is finished because half the life is over. So we should take up spiritual life. So in this age, of course, you cannot go to forest. But you can go to the ISKCON temple mm. and stay in the ISKCON temple and, and do your austerities there yes. <laughs> in the temple, do service there. So Uttanapada recognized his son as a great devotee, he made Dhruva mm. the king. So Dhruva Maharaj, very great devotee, came from Uttanapada. Uttanapada is the son of Swayambhuva Manu. And Manu is one of the sons of Brahma. Mm -hmm. When Lord Krishna was giving the knowledge in the Bhagavad Gita, in the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, it describes the history of the Bhagavad Gita. So Lord Krishna says, Imam Vibhishwate Yogam Proktaman Aham Agyayam Ishvapu Vibhishwan Vibhishwan Manave Praha Manur Ishvakami Praha Sorry, we might have sorry, sorry. Imam Vibhishwate Yogam Proktaman Aham Agyayam Vibhishwan Manave Praha Manur Ikshvaka Vebravit. Lord Krishna describes the history of the Bhagavad Gita, the first verse of the fourth mm -hmm. chapter. Mm -hmm. He said, I instructed this imperishable science of yoga mm -hmm. to the sun god mm -hmm. Vivishwan. Mm -hmm. And Vivishwan gave it to Manu. Mm -hmm. And Manu gave it to Ikshvaku. Mm -hmm. So this way the knowledge was delivered through the line of disciplic succession, right? From, yeah. from Krishna to the sun god. And then the sun god gave it to his son Manu. Manu gave it Manu to... Manu gave it to Ikshvaku. Oh. And in this way the saintly kings, the Rajarshis, the saintly kings received the knowledge. Mm. Evam parampara praptam emam rajasayo vidu mm. sakalini ham mahata yoga nashta parantapa. Mm. This knowledge was just delivered through the line of the disciplic succession, mm. the parampara, mm. the disciple. Mm. But in course of time, the knowledge was lost. Mm. So Lord Krishna had to come again to re-establish the knowledge. Because that was, it was a very long time ago the knowledge was given to the sun god, Vivishwan. So Manu got the knowledge from the sun god. And Manu is the father of mankind. And there's a book called Manu Samhita. The Manu Samhita is the law book for mankind. Yeah. But it's very difficult for people in Kali Yuga. We yes. cannot follow the Manu Samhita. Mm -hmm. It's very many different things you have to do. People, ordinary people, common people cannot follow. Mm -hmm. 
we just get let people chant the holy name, chant mm -hmm. Hare Krishna mantra, mm -hmm. that's better. Mm -hmm. Then try to do all the rituals which are mentioned in mm -hmm. Manu Samhita. Mm -hmm. Still, Manu is a very important person mm -hmm. in the universe. Mm -hmm. He's in charge of all the prajapatis. Mm -hmm. Prajapatis mean those who give, produce all the living entities. Mm -hmm. They're all coming from originally from the prajapatis. Mm -hmm. So Manu is very senior in the universe. Now, now it's the seventh Manu, right? Yeah, now seventh it's the seventh Manu, Manu fourteen. Vivashwa? Vivashwata. Vivashwata Manu. Manu. The sun god. Yeah. Vivashwata Manu. Mm. And uh, Manu Samhita is the, just like a law book. Yes. Mm. Law, like uh, how we have law book for every country, like that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But still, it, it, it's difficult to get copies, mm -hmm. to get these books, mm -hmm. not, and to understand them yes. more difficult. Yes. <laughs> Even you get the book to understand them, yes. it's mm -hmm. very difficult. Huh. So Prabhupada said for us, the Manu Samhita is not very important. Okay. Mm -hmm. We've got the main principles, the main points yes. from the Manu Samhita are given in mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Srimad Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. Srimad Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, Sukadeva Goswami has been telling all of this to Maharaj Parikshit. He wants him to know about the great souls, mm -hmm. how they did their, how they became perfect, how mm -hmm. they went back to Godhead. Mm -hmm. Just like Dhruva Maharaj went to the spiritual world mm -hmm. and he took his mother also with him. <laughs> Suniti. Uh, Suniti. Suniti. Yeah. She also went with him. Amazing. So Thanks. should yeah. he didn't forget his mother. <laughs> Suniti's life was not so good because no. uh, she had a Suruchi was the favorite of the king, yeah. but Suniti, it was her last life. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering, we can, yeah, even though the life uh, was not so good because of the sun, she could be able to go back. Mm. 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 Yeah, because of the sun. Mm. So one person in the family can deliver many yes. generations. Yes, yes. One person, just one, if, well, if there's one pure devotee mm -hmm. in the family, it can deliver all the ancestors. Mm -hmm. Deliver means uh, they're, they're going back to Godhead? Well, I don't know. They can Maybe get, they have a, get a chance to go get a chance. chance. Mm -hmm. They should have a way to go back to Godhead. Mm -hmm. But they don't go to hell. Yeah, right. Prahlad Maharaj was worried about his father. Mm. Prahlad, you know Prahlad? Prahlad, story of Nishringa Dev. So Prahlad Maharaj, he was worried because his father had fought with Lord Nishringa Dev. Mm. And he fought with him, he tried to kill him. Mm. So Prahlad was worried, maybe my father will go to hell. Mm. But Lord Nishringa Dev said, no, no. Mm. He said, because you're a pure devotee. So not mm. only your father, but all your father, Forefathers, they're all delivered for mm -hmm. 14 generations. Mm -hmm. 14 generations? Mm -hmm. 14 generations? Seven before and seven, seven after? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I know. Seven before and seven after. You said 14 so generations. generations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the mercy. If, one, if you're a pure devotee, you can deliver your mother and your mother's mother and everyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But how Dhruva Maharaj was so determined, he, he was so determined. Yes, He didn't Dhruva get uh, any spiritual, uh, huh? he didn't get any spiritual training like Prahalad Maharaj, right? Well, he did tapasya and he got the mercy of Narada Muni. Mm -hmm. He got Narada Muni's shiksha. Right. Mm -hmm. Right, he got instruction. Mm -hmm. 
and he followed the instructions yeah. uh, the mm -hmm. mantra and the ashtanga yeah. yoga process he followed yeah. it yeah. and within 6 months it's amazing yeah. to see lord vishnu 6 mm -hmm. months somebody yeah yeah he's a great soul mm -hmm. that's Not why they have there's a planet in the sky dhruva loka mm -hmm. where dhruva maharaj resides okay. the pole star Pole star. Yeah. Oh. Dhruva Maharaj resides there. Oh, okay. The Dhruva star. Until the end of the life of Brahma. Okay. This Brahma, now the Brahma is pure devotee, right, Guru Maharaj? Oh yeah. Now this Brahma. Mm hmm. He is uh, the Hari Hari Das Thakur. Well. Hari Das Thakur, yeah, they say Har Brahma Hari Das, mm -hmm. that Lord Brahma came as Hari Das Thakur to take mm -hmm. part in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Of course, while Brahma is away, somebody has to take his position. Mm -hmm. Somebody should be there. Yeah. <laughs> Just like Yamaraj. Yeah. He Vidura. Vidura comes. Vidura is Yamaraj. Mm -hmm. So when Vidura, when Vidura was uh, there, somebody took Yamaraj's mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. Of course, Yamaraj is quite busy mm -hmm. to punish all the sinful people, mm -hmm. and maybe Brahma not so busy because mm -hmm. he's done his work at the beginning of yeah. the universe. He's not so busy. Mm -hmm. so I could take time off, mm -hmm. and the. The, the the life span on this earth planet is very although it may be a hundred years it's very small mm -hmm. in terms of eternal time yes. yes i'm just thinking if aridas thakur went back to godhead at or he went back to become brahma again <laughs> i don't know no. <laughs> yeah usually we say he went back to god yeah mm. Well, I've never seen a match. Match, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, he must have went back to Godhead <laughs> <laughs> again to take up the position of Brahma. It's really <laughs> difficult. <laughs> well, but take up the position of Brahma. You you have to wait for the I, again. Wait for the end of Brahma's life. Yeah, yeah. long time. Yeah, it's a long time. Mm -hmm. But yeah. but of course the t time is at all relative. Mm. Just like tiny insects, they mm -hmm. may live only one night, mm. yeah. but for them it's a whole life. Yes. Mm. And the same way, our one hundred years, and we think a whole, a long, a lifetime. Yes. But in terms of Brahma's time, mm. it's very short yes. time. One yes. hundred years on this planet, very short time. Mm. There is a story, Lord Balaram. You know what happened was. There was this one king. Yeah. He wanted to get a husband for his daughter, mm -hmm. and so he took his daughter with them. And they went to see Lord Brahma. Mm -hmm. Somehow the king was very powerful. He could go to Lord Brahma's planet, way up in the top of the universe, Sancha Loka. Mm -hmm. And he got there, and he, he said, "I want to see Lord Brahma," but they said, "No, you have to wait because Lord mm -hmm. Brahma's." Enjoying a music concert, there was some performance taking place, and they were playing music, and so they said, "Just wait after the concert, you can speak to Brahma." And so they waited, and after the concert, they told Lord Brahma, "I want to get a husband for my daughter." And so the king said, "I thought maybe." And the king mentioned names of different kings in, or princes. He thought, "Oh, this boy and this one, or this one." He mentioned some, and Brahma said, "Oh, they're already dead, long ago." <laughs> and the king said, "Huh? How was it?" He said, "No, they were young men. I was just..." Uh, but Lord Brahma said, "No, you've been here in Brahma Loka, and you've been sitting waiting, and time has passed, and that time on Earth planet was many, many lives." So those kings all dead, many generations all dead. Mm. Oh, the king was shocked. He said, "Well, what to do? What about my daughter?" Mm. And so Lord Brahma said, "You go back to Earth, and Lord Balaram is here. He will make a good husband for your daughter." Mm. 
So what the, the king went back with his daughter and presented his daughter to Lord Bala. Mm -hmm. But because she was from the previous yuga, she was much taller. She was because she was from the previous yuga. So the people in the previous yuga were much taller than mm. people today. Mm. And so Lord Balaram took his plow and he made her smaller. Mm. So that she would be a good size to make a wife for him. Yeah. Rohini or Renuka? What? Huh? Yes, in Krishna book we read this past time. You read it? Yeah, we read it. Huh. I don't think it's in Krishna book. No? No. Oh, okay. The, of course, there's pastimes with a plow, but oh, not where he got this the wife. This pastime, yes, okay. The wife, it's there in the Bhagavatam, but not in Tenth Krishna Krishna, okay. Okay. That's, his <laughs> wife's name is Revati. Revati, right, Revati. Okay, any questions? No, they, okay, they, they are not here now. Okay, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Hare Krishna.